Lateral inhibition is an important circuit phenomenon that frequently occurs in situations where an array of sensory receptors map the spatial distribution of a sensory stimulus. Examples include retinal and subretinal circuits of the visual system, or the mechanosensory receptors detecting stimuli over the surfaces of the body. Lateral inhibition occurs when there is a mutual inhibition between receptors responding to stimuli in adjacent parts of the receptive field. Whatever the modality, the effect of lateral inhibition is to increase the contrast of edges by causing an enhanced differential in the response to the stimulus on either side of the edge. The top diagram shows a network that doesn't implement lateral inhibition. After each stage of processing, the sensory signal grows progressively larger. This is the pink area shown in the three charts to the right. At the third stage, it would be almost impossible to discriminate where the sensory signal originated. This network lacks the ability to discriminate. The bottom diagram shows a similar network that does implement lateral inhibition. This time, each layer of the network serves to enhance the sensory signal so it's easier to detect. Neurons on either side of the edge of the signal are inhibited so their firing rate is driven below their normal value. Lateral inhibition provides a nice contrast to let the nervous system determine where the signal originated and to increase the resolution so it can tell the difference between two nebra signals. This tutorial will show you how to create a very simple lateral inhibitory network to demonstrate these principles. Let's start by creating a new project. A copy of this tutorial is available at Program Files, Animate Lab, Tutorials, Neural Networks. Please choose where you want to create this project and then name it Lateral Inhibition. When you have the project created, add an organism and open its behavioral editor. Then add a non-spiking neuron. We'll be using non-spiking neurons and synapses because this makes it easier to see the effects of inhibition. Change the resting potential of the neuron to negative 60 millivolts. Then copy and paste the neuron. We'll be creating a line of 16 neurons that can be thought of as depolarizing visual receptors that are looking at a contiguous part of the visual field. We'll have to loop the receptors in the diagram in order to get them to fit on the screen, but you should straighten them out in your imagination. Each neuron connects to its nearest neighbors by non-spiking inhibitory synapses. Draw a synaptic connection between our two neurons and select the non-spiking hyperpolarizing IPSP synapse. Change the conductance to 0.1 microsiemens, the saturate to negative 30 millivolts, and the threshold to negative 60 millivolts. Now add a reciprocal inhibitory synapse. Select the neurons and synapses and copy and paste them. Now connect the two groups with reciprocal inhibitory connections. Select the entire group and copy and paste it. Again connect the two groups. We'll repeat this until we end up with 16 neurons that are all connected.
go through and rename all these neurons from 1 to 16. Next, select neurons 1 through 8 by holding down the control key and clicking on each one. We'll be simulating that there's a line segment in the visual field of these sensory neurons, so we want them to be stimulated more than the other neurons. Set them to have a tonic current of 25 nanoamps. Now select neurons 9 through 16 and give them a tonic current of 10 nanoamps. Next, we'll add a data array chart. This chart allows you to display values from a number of neurons simultaneously so you can compare the output values of a population of neurons. Open the data window and set it to have one column and 16 rows. Then add each neuron in order to the rows of the chart. Now go back and change the data member variables to look at membrane voltage instead of firing frequency. Finally, let's set the values for color coding. Set the base value to negative 0.045. This is the halfway point where the color is white. Set the max value to negative 0.035. And the min value to negative 0.055. This will color code the bars based on their height. Bars above negative 45 millivolt will be colored red depending on their height. Now let's run the simulation. The oscillations at either end of the graph represent end effects caused by the fact that inhibition is only coming in from one side. More interesting is the oscillation in the middle. We have a very clear edge enhancement. The neuron just on the high stimulus side is more depolarized than the rest while the neuron just on the low stimulus side is more hyperpolarized. We also have oscillations on either side of the boundary. This oscillation clearly marks out the location of the edge of our line segment. This tutorial has demonstrated some of the basic principles of lateral inhibition.